Welcome back to the shop everybody. So in this video we're going to make pet shaped trays for your best friends. They'll look something like this. Now there's several ways to do this and I'll show you some tricks along the way. We're going to use a method using CA glue and some blue painters tape to hold down the project. Now here I made a little boo-boo. This is something you can laugh at. You can see there was no nails in that nail gun. Got to put the nails in it. That was a practice run. Let's call it a practice run. All right, let's try that again. Four nails holds it still. We'll take the extra block and put it on the left to create a fence because I'm going to do more than one of these. Now the line I drew around there tells me where to put the blue tape so that I know I've got the area covered. Put the blue tape on the back of the project, covering both project and the wasteboard. Now you're going to want to apply six times more glue than you need in some activator. And in quick, fast, in a hurry, that thing is down. We'll use the paper trick to make sure we've got the zero correct. We're going to use the eyeball method to make sure X and Y are correct. Now this carve is going to take two bits, a bit change. And that collar I'm pointing to right there works in conjunction with that little yellow box from Pawn CNC. What you'll do is put that collar on every bit. Oh, I'm upside down here. Let me get this the right way. Inside that box are those two pieces that look like quarters, and those are depth stops. What you do is put the bit in there so the end of the bit or the tip of the bit is touching the depth stops. The collar, the locking collar, sits in that groove. And this works with several bits. And the, the key here is the collar is exactly the same on every bit. Put the cap back on. Take your Allen wrench. It fits in that little hole by my thumb. Tighten up the collar. Now every bit that has a single collar on it has exactly the same depth. No need to re-zero. They work great. Now I'm going to leave a link below to those. And if you are interested in them, you can help me out by clicking on that link and checking them out for yourself. So here we go. Around and around she goes and Atlas's face starts to appear. Now we'll cut the outside ring and that's a little unconventional but I have faith in that glue. It's going to hold that, that piece down where I want it before I start carving the face. The reason I did that was because I didn't want to change to the V bit and then change back to the end mill. That would have been three changes in one carb and I just didn't see that it was necessary. Now we'll put the V bit in utilizing the collar. No need to re-zero for Z. And here we go. I took the dust collector off so that you could see what this thing was doing. It's going to start with his nose. And we're going to run around here for a little bit, and before you know it, we'll have old Atlas's face in the bottom of that tray. And there's the culprit right there. Back to the carve. Now there's one thing that a CNC allows, and that allows for other objects or other things to be done in the shop. Like... Atlas hijinks. He hates shop cleanup time. I think it's really the vacuum. Doing a little critical measurement here. Very important upgrade to the shop coming. And there it is. I'm always impressed with the precision that this Shapoko has. I'm going to do a full tutorial on this and do another video. Once that video is up, I'll come back to this one and put a link to it so that you can watch that video as well if you'd like. But there we are. There's my buddy's face. Forever in a piece of wood. Now if you don't think that this method works, watch me pry that off and watch the pry bar bend as I'm lifting it. I guess you'll be able to see that a little better when I pry the face off. 
Pry his face off. That doesn't sound right. One slip here with this tool and we'll be starting over with a new project. Luckily I didn't. But here's where I want you to take notice of the pry bar. Watch it bending as I'm trying to pull that thing up. That carving was going nowhere. There he is. Clean up the snap to start with the next piece. Yank the old tape off. Clean up the stragglers. And we're ready to start again. Now we did Atlas, so of course we got to do his little buddy, Mr. Capers. Same process. Cover the wasteboard with painter's tape. Put down six amounts of glue that you don't need. A little stick fast in a hurry. Zero the machine. And here we see another goof. When you start your machine and you believe the origin is in the center and it does that, that's wrong. We will stop the machine and check the programming. And what was wrong was I forgot to move the origin to the center. It was bottom left corner. Luckily, I didn't wreck anything that was needed over on that side. So after reprogramming, putting the origin where it belongs, here we go. He's always in the middle of something, Mr. Atlas. Mr. Capers is obviously a different shape here. But it's going to be the same steps. We're going to cut out the center to create the tray or the bowl. Then we're going to go around the outside to cut it loose. Switch to a V-bit and we'll put the detail in the center. And just like that, we got a Mr. Capers forever in wood. We'll pry him loose. Same technique. Very straightforward. On this one, however, the bit did not pass all the way through the bottom everywhere, all the way around. It was very, very close. But we're still going to need to do a little sanding on the belt sander and some hand sanding after that. Pretty impressive how sticky that, that little CA glue is holding that down. Mr. Capers. But the beauty of it is that it cleans off the wasteboard very easily so you can start again with no clamps in the way. There's no interference. So here we go over to the belt sander for just a few minutes to thin those lines out. I'll snap them off, those little burrs. Then we'll move on to some hand sanding which everybody likes. That's always fun, hand sanding. And it breaks the edge on the piece a little bit so it's a little smoother. Now here what you're seeing is, in the program I didn't catch that there was an extra highlight in the eyes. I didn't care for that so I'm taking a quarter inch chisel and I'm practicing my hand carving skills to remove that. And it takes just a little patience. But don't ever think you can't change the carve after you've done it on a CNC machine if you find that you're not happy with it. You can always apply hand tools to make corrections. And that's what we're doing there. A little sanding afterwards. And none the wiser. It, it looks much, much better. And maybe not made by hand. But programming a CNC is no easy task until you learn it very well. So handcrafted by Vernon Hinkle it is. So all that is left is to add some spray polyurethane. And we've got some great looking trays to keep our keys in and etc. I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give us a like, a share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Don't forget the tutorial video that I'm going to put out very soon. And as always... We'll catch you on the next one.